Hello everyone, I'm back here with another update for the Cycles plugin for 3ds Max. I've just released version um, Alpha 307, and with that comes just one new feature, which is Active Shade, which I'll be showing off in this video here. Um, and I will also be showing off uh, a couple features from the previous version that I never got around to making a video about. So first I'll just go over, I have a really simple scene here, I'll go over how I have all the objects and materials set up. So I've got a ground plane, which just has uh, as a diffuse material with this uh, this gray checker texture on it. I have a teapot that has this mixed material here applied to it, um, and that is just a mix between the diffuse with this texture um, and the glossy. That right now is set to zero roughness, so it will produce a perfectly sharp uh, reflection. Uh, and then this whole scene is lit by a physical sun and sky environment, which is one of the new features uh, from the previous version. So how that is set up is I'll pull up my environment dialog here, and in here you just set the environment map type to cycles environment, drag it over to the material editor, uh, and then you plug in the physical sun and sky to the environment slot. And then whenever you do a render it will bake this out to an HDRI essentially, and use it as just a normal image environment map. Uh, and then also in the scene is uh, the physical camera that it will be rendered from. So I'll do a quick render quick uh, to show you off what the scene looks like. Um, so we have uh, the checker, the checker ground, we have the teapot, um, and it's casting a shadow from the sun in the sky. And what I can do now, because I'm actually rendering this in active shade mode, is I can grab objects and move them around. And uh, the active shade viewport will update in real time with whatever I'm doing to them. So I can, I can translate, I can rotate, do, do whatever to your objects. Um, and I can also do the same thing to their materials. So I'll pull up the material editor again. Um, like I can go to this mix material and change the fac here to zero, so it will only be the diffuse texture. Um, I can change it to one, and then it will only be the glossy material. I can even go into the oopsie. I can even go into the glossy material and say set the roughness to 0 0.05, and then that will give this a little bit. What was a previous uh, perfectly sharp reflection will now be a little bit blurry. Um, so I'll go back and I'll turn this back to. Two five. Um, and you can also change parameters on textures, like on this checker. I can change it to one instead of uh, eight tiling. I'll change it to one. And now there's only instead of sixteen checkers across, there's only two. Um, but I'll change that back to eight. So you can you can go around. You can fiddle with all your materials and map properties and all that stuff, and that will update uh, in real time in the active shade viewport. So. Um, oh, and another cool feature of the physical sun and sky I have is I have it set to use this sun uh, position widget. So what I can do is I can grab that sun positioner and I can um, change the parameters here to change what direction the sun is coming from. So right now you can see the sun is coming from the, uh, the back left behind the teapot. It's casting a shadow towards the camera and to the right. So if I set this uh, azimuth here to 90 degrees, then it will the sun will be in the back right. I will cast the shadow forward and to the left. Um, over here, I could lower the sun's position in the sky, so instead of 55 degrees, I can do 45 degrees, and that will make it cast uh, a longer shadow. I can go to, go up to like 70 degrees, and it will it will make a shorter shadow. So really, this this active shade is all about letting you just play around with your materials and your scene, um, and just get really really quick updates on how how that affects um, how it will actually look. So that is um, about all I had for this video. Um, one other thing I wanted to show was the uh, physical camera. This is, again is a feature from the previous version, um, is that it will now support depth of field. So I can turn on depth of field and have it set pretty severe here to a 0.5 uh, aperture ratio. So I can put that up to like 8, would be more normal, and you can see it doesn't do much to this scene. I can turn it down to 0.1, and you can see it kind of goes nuts because that's really low. Um, say 0.3. I kind of want to keep the teapot in focus here and have the checkers blur. Maybe around a 0.5. So you can see in the in black it's blurred, but right on, right on where it's focusing in the middle of the teapot here, you can see that's uh, that's still really sharp. Um, so that's uh, that's all I have for for today. Um, probably for this year, uh, there will be more updates coming next year. Uh, we'll continue to work on this until I get all the all the features worked out. I'll also be posting an updated roadmap probably later in December about, uh, about exactly what remains to be done next year. So uh, thanks for watching.